All right, what is going on guys? It's Steven Rama and this video is going to be something that I have never, never done before. And I'm gonna be changing the hard drive on my PS4 because I've reached the point where I absolutely cannot store more than eight games on my PlayStation 4 because, well, mostly because of Call of Duty, really. But back during PS3, I remember I can have a total amount of maybe 20 plus games on my PlayStation. It was fun, it was cool. You can switch between all of them and you don't have to worry about deleting any kind of memory. And actually, my limited edition white PS3 Super Slim or whatever it's called, uh, didn't even run out of memory by the time it reached the end of its life cycle before I got my PS4. So I'm gonna be upgrading this thing and what I'm gonna be upgrading it with, let's get this open here, going to be upgrading it with, boom, this bad boy right here, two terabyte backup plus Slim. This thing, was a bitch to find and I actually had to go driving half an hour away from where I live. A local Walmart had it actually near my girlfriend's house so I picked it up and brought it all the way back here and we're gonna be modifying the shit out of this PS4 switching it to two terabytes. Okay guys so the website that I found for this that actually walks you through the entire process of upgrading and taking apart your PlayStation and replacing the hard drive is right here. As always I will leave a link for everything in the description but this actually recommends that you use the Backup Plus Slim which is the one that I picked up here for the external hard drive replacement because it is one of the best ones. It has some fast RPM. It's not too much of an upgrade but it is noticeable in the loading time and everything like that so that's what we got. We're going to be replacing it in our PS4, replacing the 500 gigabyte with the two terabyte, and we're going to be following the instructions. So first, all right, guys, so first thing is first, we had to download the operating system files onto a USB because that's what it requires you to do while switching hard drives. So we have it on here. If you want to know how to do it, because you have to name certain folders, a certain name, everything will be in the description. I'm going to link you guys to this website so you can follow exactly what to do instead of showing you in this video, because you know, you may not want to follow this video, the text, I prefer text tutorials over videos, but I like both either way. Some of you may like videos. So if you want to follow this, go ahead. But for this part, it's going to be in the description. Next step we're going to be doing is backing up everything into the PlayStation Plus storage because we're going to be losing absolutely everything here. And look how much of that bitch is taken up. Holy shit. All of that down there, the free space, none of it, none of it will accept the video games because it all has to do with the operating system and it pisses me off. I don't know why it has to do that, but it takes up a lot. So we have everything backed up into the save. We just finished, took, the, took about 20 minutes to back everything up, but it should. If you guys have the PlayStation Plus online storage, I do recommend that over the USB because it is saved in the cloud. And when you sign in, it'll just automatically, everything will be downloaded back to your new hard drive. So let's do this shit. All right, guys, this next part is a little tricky. So if you don't have a lot of experience opening up electronics, I have some. That's why I'm trying to do this myself. If you don't have any and you don't really know what you're doing, I do recommend bringing it into maybe a local computer shop. They are able to do it for you. If you tell them exactly what you want, they can upgrade it for you. You're just going to have to pay for all the equipment and everything that they need to upgrade it. And they'll take care of it for you. But we're going to be doing this ourselves here for those of you that want to see this. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is pop off the lid here. It's a bit of a pain. You got to push it out from the PlayStation itself. Should come off like that. Boom. You'll hear some clicks. Don't freak out. That's just the lid coming off. Next thing we're going to want to look for is boom. This guy right here. We got to take this guy out. All right, guys. So I decided I'm going to move to my desk to show you a better view of this. We're going to do a weird camera angle. You're up here this time. We're gonna be taking this apart step by step. I'm gonna show you each screw that you're gonna to have to do here. Starting with the first screw that we're gonna do, it has the PS buttons. It is the big screw closest to where the hard drive is. This is the only one that you're gonna be taking out right here. Do not touch any of the screws in the back. You can easily identify it by the one closest to the edge where the disc tray is, the biggest one with the PlayStation buttons on it. And boom, that's it. Guys, that's the only screw you gotta take out. Once you take that out, you can pretty much just pull out the tray. Here is your hard drive in your PlayStation. This is what we're going to be taking out and replacing. Now this, if I believe it is held down by some screws, yep. Yeah. Okay, so there's four screws each side here. We're gonna have to take those out as well. So I'm gonna show you a bit of a close up here. Get some four screws on each side. One, two, three, and four. Uh, 
once those screws are removed, this should slide out. That's it. This is the whole thing right here. And I probably shouldn't be touching the microchips on the other side, but here we have it. This is a 500 gigabyte. These are the specs to the stock model that comes with the original, original PlayStation 4. Now it's time to open this up right here. All we're looking for is the drive. This stuff here, keep with you. Do not throw any cords out because you never know. You could use you could use this. I actually have another expansion drive that I use for all my video editing tools that I have on a hard drive that uses this cord. So if that cord ever gives out, I can always use it to replace it. Okay guys, so here's the hard drive itself. The hard drive is actually really, really nice. And we're gonna have to do something with this that I really don't like doing with new products, especially things that are expensive as this and it's gonna void the warranty on this thing pretty much instantly when we do it. So we gotta pop off the casing and we're gonna be removing the port that connects to the computer and inserting this into the PlayStation. Now how we're gonna do that is we're gonna run our fingers along here because I believe it's pretty much held together with adhesive. And that's what we have this thing for, a scraper. Now we gotta be really careful with this here. We don't wanna fucking cut our fingers. Come on, you're right there. You can do it. You can do it, there you go. Just use a little bit of force, and boom, there is the exposed hard drive that we will be using. Perfect, look at that, nothing was damaged either. Maybe the foam took a little bit of cutting, but you can always re reseal this too with the PlayStation 4 hard drive, so you can still use this. This is still usable. It's covered by some foil. We won't need that because we do have the metal casing, so let's actually take this off here. And one of the other things I really like about Seagate products, or Segate, however you want to say it, is their manufacturing, they do a really, really good job. For the amount that you have to pay, they do a really good job with their products and I'm really happy with buying their products. So guys, if you do want to upgrade your hard drive, I definitely recommend Seagate products. Definitely, because they are trustworthy, they do last. Carefully here, hopefully we don't rip off any resistors on the exposed circuit board there. Make sure we take off all the foil because we don't want any coming in contact with any electronics that can short circuit cause us to lose our memory completely. Now right here, this is the connector. Boom, this is the connector on the board that we will be taking out. And this is pretty easy how to take this out. What you have to do is there is a piece right here, the bar that runs along it, and you're gonna have to pop that off. It's pretty easy. I'm just gonna remove the plastic. Nope, maybe not. We can use the tape to actually take this off. We won't need that any longer. We can pry this off here. Let me stand up for this. This part right here can just easily pop out. This is no longer needed, this piece. This can be used to place on the PlayStation 4. And actually, let me give you, let me take that, show you guys for a reference here. This is from the Seagate. This is the PlayStation 4 hard drive. This can easily just be plugged in right here, like so. I take a little bit of force, and boom. PlayStation hard drive, this can now connect to the computer and you can use it as a regular hard drive. It's that easy, guys. Now, with our new hard drive, the only thing left to do is to put this inside the casing. The open side is where these pieces are going to be facing, so if we were to flip it like this, slide it in, that's how it's gonna go, so this way, the connectors are actually on the outside. When it slides in, it will connect right to the PlayStation. But first, let's screw this back in. Yeah, 
it is fastened. And now, last thing left to do, see if it fits. Perfect. Wonderful. It, perfect. It worked. That's it, guys. The transfer was a success. Now the only thing left to do, secure the final screw here. And that is it. Time to close up the PS4. Let's close it up here. And that's it, guys. Two terabyte PS4 is finally completed, but there is one more step we need to do, and we're gonna switch over to the TV to check out what we have to do. Okay, so what I recommend doing here is have your USB ready with the operating system files on it and make sure it is plugged into the PS4 before even starting it, just in case to be safe. You don't really have to do this, but I, I would like to do this. Hopefully this all works out. Another thing you need to do as well is make sure that you have your controller connected to the PlayStation itself, because this PlayStation is like it is brand new. It will not recognize absolutely anything. Now, originally on the launch of PS4, these hard drives that I just installed, the two terabyte, did not work. It was not compatible. Samsung hard drives were not compatible with PS4. Ever since they released the patch, I don't remember what the patch number was, but it was fixed. So this hard drive should work without a problem. All right, guys, so do not panic. It will prompt you with this screen. All you gotta do is turn on your DualShock. There you go. Uh, connect the USB storage device that contains the update file. We do have that, so we're gonna go over to OK. Right there. Now we wait for this to install. Let's skip right to when it's done. Okay guys, success, we got it to work. And this is the final warning screen. Everything will be lost. If you have anything, anything on these accounts, they're all gone. This is sort of the sacrifice in order to upgrade your hard drive. If you select no, your PS4 will be unusable and you will not have the upgrade until you upgrade and rebuild the PS4 itself. So we're gonna have to go with yes. Hopefully you guys backed up all your stuff too or else everything will be gone and we will be back once this is finished. All right guys, once it's installed, it prompts you with this screen and you are pretty much done, that's it. It's a success, everything was set up. So we're gonna begin, we're gonna skip all these steps here. This is just gonna make us set up the time, set up the internet. And once again, I do apologize that I am filming this with my phone. Currently, HDCP is on by default, so I cannot record on my computer. I'm gonna have to go in and disable that in order to reuse and record the PlayStation again. But as of now, I can only record with my phone due to that. And finally, guys, I am back on my computer recording gameplay. Here it is right here. We're gonna go ahead and go into the storage and take a look to see if everything was completed. Now, if everything went good, everything was okay, it's gonna recognize the new storage device without a problem. So let's go here. We're gonna go into our storage. And as you can see, two terabytes of data well not really exactly two because i have everything installing already all the games are going to be back the only downside is you're gonna have to wait a pretty long time for all the games to install but anyways guys links for everything in the description below if you want to do this yourself check it out thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one